Today's high watt soundbite is all about radios, gates, and inspiration. Well, the inspiration for today's session comes from a little work in progress and a bit of a jam that I got up to just this morning. Check this out. Definitely a work in progress, but I'm excited to develop that one further, no question. About a year ago, I posted a session called Radio Gator. And if you haven't seen that session, I'm going to link it at the end of this one. This is such a huge source of inspiration for me in the studio that I've sort of decided that I'm not going to come and do a part two and a part three. I'm just going to revisit this as a subject about every six months on the channel. I promise that if you follow through with this idea and you build yourself a radio gator session like I'm talking about today, you're going to lose yourself. You're going to get buried in the studio. I promise you, you're literally not going to come out for a few days because this can be that inspiring and that much fun. Okay, so what am I talking about with this gated radio? I'm essentially talking about a piece of hardware that I built for Skinny Puppy back in 1992 for the Last Rights Tour. Kevin Key was playing live drums on that tour, and for months ahead of that tour, we had talked about taking a technique that we use in the studio all the time live, and that was having a bunch of gated radios that you could trigger off the drums. So this piece of hardware that I built was four car stereos in a 3U rack mount unit, and all the power supplies and everything were all built in. It was a beautiful little unit, really heavy, and we took that thing on tour with a set of gates that lived just right above that. And each of the outputs of those car stereos, we fed into the gates and then used Kevin's drums to trigger them. I can't tell you how much fun this is. There's no way that I can project how much fun this is in the studio. You have to try this. The inspiration and the absolute randomness that would happen when we were in the studio by tuning a bunch of live radio stations and then keying them with drums. Of course, you never knew what was going to happen next, right? So a few years ago, I sort of recognized, you know, why am I not using gated radio in my productions anymore? And I realized it's just lack of access. Of course, that old piece of hardware, that thing died decades ago. And who's got 10 radios kicking around their studio? Well, we've got internet radio. So at that time, I decided I was going to make a Radio Gator template session in Pro Tools, where I just literally recorded 10 tracks of internet radio and just kept changing stations, right? A couple of music stations, a couple of spoken word, talk radio, all kinds of different variety. So the goal, regardless of what DAW you're working in, is to create 10 stereo tracks of recorded radio so that you can gate those radio stations and trigger them with drums and all kinds of different stuff. So because I've used that session so many times, I came into the studio yesterday with the intention of making kind of an updated version, a brand new kind of version two of my Radio Gator session. I took a little extra time yesterday in seeking out some really good sounding stations. So many radio stations and FM particularly just have a super wide and huge sound. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes radio can be wider than wide. As I'm building those stations and recording in the next channel kind of thing, I'm muting the previous one. So sometimes the universe gets involved in these things because when I came in this morning to check this session out, I realized that I probably had three or four songs that were either in the same key or in complementary keys that were all happening at the same time. And that just inspires me when that happens. I mean, one of the beautiful things about recording linearly on your DAW is that, of course, now you can start shifting these tracks. You know, 30 years ago when Kevin and I were doing live radios and drums, 
you couldn't shift anything around. It was just live. Whatever was on that radio station was what came out. Now you can go into your DAW and start shifting, right? You can take a track and, you know, maybe it's not in the right key and the song that's currently playing has nothing to do with what you're currently working on. You could just move it, shift it around until you find a song somewhere in that 10 minutes, potentially that is in the same key or a complementary key. Check out the three radio stations being keyed off a drum machine. Here they are solo. So that's the result of a simple kick, snare, and hat programmed to open up the external key of those gates. Absolutely beautiful. Three different radio stations and three different songs being keyed with a kick, snare, and hat set up a beautiful bed track for me. And very typically, once I get a little groove going like that, I'll just lay down a very simple bass line. start overdubbing parts and developing a song idea out of it. So fun. Just for a moment, I'm going to play everything I overdubbed on top of those radios without the radio plan. my acoustic guitar with a whole bunch of effects on it. Love it. And I'm gating these radios in such a way that you don't know where these pieces are coming from. I'm just letting a tiny little snippet of that mix open. This is just so cool. You can literally have multiple tracks going, triggering different samples, and yet you can't tell where any of it's coming from. If I opened up the gate and just let it go, it would just be like, oh man, you can't use that. But when you get creative and you close that gate down and feed it into some effect, Oh man, this can be so much fun, it's unreal. I can tell from my experience over the last 24 hours that this is gonna be a process that I get up to probably every six months to 12 months where I create a brand new radio gator session so that I've just got a nice, fresh sound available when I need it next. You know, it takes time to build a session like this, but honestly, I probably use that first template that I made at least 10 different times in 10 different mixes. I know that this thing is gonna come in very, very handy. I'm only using three of the 10 stations that I recorded on this one. So, you know, on some other track and some other key, I'm gonna to have to come and revisit this and check it out. This is the cool thing about these sessions is you don't know how they're gonna line up. This is just one of the most fun things that I've ever gotten up to in the studio, and I strongly encourage you to give it a try.